Hi, my name is Adams. Today I'm going to teach you how you can build a simple predictive model using using NIME. NIME is an open source software package that is used to build a predictive model. It does various building algorithms such as random forest, logistic regression, linear regression, decision trees. You can do a lot of stuff with this software. So I'm going to open the program called NIME. Then from there we can start building our model. Alright, so the first thing I'm going to do is to open new sheets. So just come here and click on new. Just click next and finish. So I have new work workspace to build my under. Now I have some set of data to execute this model building process. So I'm going to go to my desktop and bring the data into the name workspace by just dragging it like this yes that is done so the data the data is in excel format and the is a particular node that is meant for reading excel format related data so nearly i drag it out it has automatically activated for me but I still need to do a lot of configuration by right clicking and click configure. Now I have my data here. These are the data. But before I move on, I would like to make a simple manipulation here. The first row is actually the columns names. So I need to tell the Excel reader that the first row is column name. By coming here and just click table contain columns names, then I can click refresh. Now I'm good. So as we can see, this is hypothetical data from IBM Watson. It is hypothetical in the sense that it's not actually real data because normally it is not really possible to get data about the employee. It is confidential information that most organizations will not want to give out. So this is why they develop a simulated hypothetical data that is very, very close to what we can see in reality. So this data is all about employee attrition. We want to predict employee attrition based on the following features, the predictors. predictors. We have age, department, distance from home, education, uh, whether the person work is somehow over time, the person carry out over time work or not sometimes. We have monthly income as part of what we want to look for as possible predictor of turnover. The marital status, whether the person is still married or not. Then the level of job satisfaction is another variable we want to look at so we want to look at how this variable jointly influence employee turnover so that is our main objective in this tutorial so if everything is fine i'm just going to click ok so the next line of action is to bring in another node we call partition Partitioning allow me to actually divide the data into two groups. The one that's going to be for the training and the one that's going to be used for the testing. So I'm going to pick it up and drag it here like this. Then we'll go down and link the two together by SL reader data because this one consists of all the data. And here I want to divide the data into two. So this node partitioning will allow me to do that click I have to configure now 
So I need to take partition name. How do I want my data to be divided? I want my I want 75% of my data to be used as training. And the remaining 25% should be used for testing. So I am going to also mark this and click OK. So all that will be used as default. Now I can execute. Now we are good. So the next line of action is to pick up the algorithm that I'm going to use to train my, my model. So there are different kind of algorithm that I can use. But since this is a classification problem, then I'm going to use the learner that I can handle classification problem. We have diff different types. Uh, we have three example learner. We have post learner. We have a lot of them. There are decision tree. There are random. It is random forest. This is linear regression. Linear regression is not applicable in the sense that we are dealing with qualification classification problem. In that case, it means the outcome variable is binary or multinomial or ordinal in nature. So I'm going to pick up random forest to train my data. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to attach the first partition, the, 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 the part of the data that's going to be used for my training, which is 75% of the data. I'm going to attach it here. Then configure. So here is actually asking for the target column. It's asking for which variable is the outcome. And here I have my employee status, which is simply the Attrition. This employee station is divided into two, as I've already said. The active one, people who are still working with organization, and the quit people who have already left or gone. So this particular place provides information about the predators. So I'm going to predict employee status based on the following information I have about the employee, the work life balance, yet years in current role, the working year marital status, their monthly income, whether they have their contract is overtime or they don't participate in overtime work, then performance rating, relationship satisfaction, everything here. These are going to be our predators. Now I'm going to leave every other thing as default and just click OK. Now I can execute. There we go. So the next line of action is to pick up my predictors. So predictors are going to be used to test the model. So random forest predictor. So I'm going to pick up the random forest predictor here. Yeah. Now I have to do two things as well. The predictors actually need two information from two different nodes. It need information about the training model and also need information about the test data. So I can link the training model using this and link them together with the predictor and also link the test data with the predictor. I'm going to configure now. So everything is fine. Prediction column I'm going to be prediction employee status, which is good. Then I will leave everything as default as well and click OK. So the program is just more of automatic. It's very, very nice program and then making things very easy. Imagine if you want to do this in R, you are going to be writing a lot of code. So if you are the kind and do really like writing code, then this is the best program for you. With name, everything is easy. So I'm going to go on and execute. Now I'm good. The next line of action is going to be to test my model to score the scoring. I want to know the level of accuracy of the model. So I'm going to pick up another node called scorer. 
So this color will allow me to evaluate how good the model is. So I will take this color. I actually have two options. I can pick the one for JavaScript or pick the one for ordinary color. I'm going to pick the one for ordinary color. And I'm going to lay the data together. So I'm going to configure this color. Now we say the first columns I want it to be the actual employee status, my actual attrition information, and the next column should follow with the petition. So I click OK. And now I can execute. So with this color, now I can evaluate my model. First thing I want to look at is confusion matrix. So we can see from this confusion matrix now, it gives us information of how good the model is in predicting. This particular role and this column means that the model was able to predict that 12 people have left the organization. Well, in reality, those 12 people, 12 employees have already gone. But for this, the model predicts that 47 people have left the organization. But unfortunately, those 47 people are still active. Then furthermore, so this is a kind of misclassification. This is error. And also here, the model predicts that 5 people are active. Unfortunately, those 5 people have already gone. But here is the good news. The model predicts that three of our employees are active. But in reality, they are actually active. So what we have here and here are accuracy. And what we have here in this diagonal and this are cl misclassification. So the Accuracy percentage is going to be calculated based on this. So let's move on and check the accuracy information. So I can go to accuracy statistics. So as we can see here, the model is almost like 86% accurate in predicting turnover. We can see this is very, very important. And we can also move on. This recall is also very, very important because this is actually going to determine if we are going to really deploy the model to make important prediction about how we can make policy regarding employee turnover. So we can see what this one is seen is that if the model predicts 100 people are going to leave, then we, with this 0.203, it's saying that at least 20% of them will leave the organization. However, this is very, very low. This recall is just too low for practical purpose. And if you look at the active, now this is good news. If the model PDs, 100 people are going to leave, at least 98% of those people will stay. Are going to stay. I mean, if the model predicts 100 people are going to stay, at least 98.4 percent of, of those people are going to stay. So this is actually good news. At least the model will be able to tell us that no, these are the kind of people that are going to stay with us. At least this is good for practical purpose. So this is just the simple way of <coughs> using this. Building is simple. Predictive model in time. In the next tutorial, I'm going to dig deeper by using different algorithms and comparing them by evaluating their level of accuracy. So, thank you for listening. Bye for now.